All right, so when the training starts, that's when all of our support and everything starts too. So that's when the warranty kicks off and everything else. So we're gonna go through the whole process of 3D printing, and then we're gonna go through some troubleshooting techniques and things like that that you'll be able to use. And then, since we know that the printer already works, which is awesome, we'll kind of inspect it and make sure that everything showed up and everything's going all right, and then we'll check on this one and make sure that it's all built right and everything's ready to rock on that one too. So. Uh, to start off with, um, do you guys have a computer that you can install programs on? Yes. Okay, awesome. So we're going to install Cura, which is found on the SD cards on a computer. I already did it. You did? Did you set it up to the correct settings? I did on the little one, and I did. I set the correct settings on the big one, but it says I need a driver. I think I only need it. Um, for, so that's if you print plugged in, um, and that's something that we're going to talk about here in a little bit too. So uh, let's go ahead and go check your uh, slicer settings first and make sure that everything is all set up like just like it should be. So we're going to go, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you and then we can double check it. Okay, well, this is for the big one, right? Uh, we'll start with whatever one you want. So let's start with the small one. We're in separate ends of the building, so right now we're in the room that has the big one. Okay. Um, so yeah, we can we can start with that. We can start with the A31, and then I'll just show you on uh, on the SD cards. There's actually the links to uh, everything else that you'll need. So it has like a, a picture of the screenshot. Is that what you guys use to set it up? Yeah. Okay, um, so yeah, we'll, I'll kind of go over that a little bit too, just to kind of touch base, and then you guys will have it on uh, on video as well, so you'll be able to find it. It's good. So I'll go ahead and share my screen with you guys, so you can see it. So you'll have Cura, and Cura has to be set up all the way down for your particular printer, and one of the the biggest things you want to make sure is that the size of your build area uh -huh. is set to the proper amount. And that's found by uh, when you're looking inside of the Cura folder and your SD card. And then this screenshot right here, that's what these settings are right here. And it's really, really important that these settings are correct and these settings are correct because if they're not correct, that's one of the first big troubleshooting issues that can arise if they're not lined up perfectly. So um, what you want to do to make sure that they're all lined up is you can click machine and then machine settings and then make sure that you have all of the proper settings. So it's just up here in the top. Okay, hold on, it was booting up. Okay, yeah, that's fine. And then we'll make sure that we have machine and then machine settings and everything is set up properly. Okay. And then which, which version of Cura are you using? Uh, it should say across the top right here. 4.6. Okay, awesome. That's great. Yeah, because we use that version of Cura because that has all of the drivers that the printer needs to be able to send files to the SD card. So we always want to make sure that that's that correct version of Cura. So uh, what we'll do then is for the A31, it's going to be set up with these exact settings over here on the side. So if you want, you can go ahead and make sure that these settings are set up on the A31. So we'll start with the layer height. And that is how close each one of the layers are together. So it's going to be layered layer by layer by layer by layer to form that three-dimensional shape. And that layer height is how close they are. So 0.2 is a great place to start. And that's like medium quality. We print almost everything in 0.2. But if you want to print in a high quality, then you can change that to 0.1 if you want to do something that's very fine and detailed. And that's a tenth of a millimeter for each layer. And that's about the width of a human hair. So you can get some really high quality prints. And if you want to print something fast and you're not worried about the quality of it, you can actually go all the way up to 0.3. And then when you change those settings, it will change them in your slicer as well. And you'll see in, in a second when we put a model in there how that will change everything. So you can set this to uh, somewhere between 0.1 and 0.3 on the layer height. Awesome. And then the shell thickness is going to be 0 0.8. And that has to be a multiple of our nozzle size down here. So anytime, if you want to make like the shells or how strong the model is going to be. So we always start with two shells because that's a really good durable model. But if you want something to be really strong, then you could just add 0.4 to that and then keep adding 0.4. And that will just make the walls of the outside part of it really thick and strong. Awesome. 
You guys got it? Yep. Okay, awesome. And then the bottom and top thickness, you want that to be the same as your shell thickness as well. So that'll also be 0 0.8. And then the fill density, that's the, the part that's filled inside of the model. So anywhere between 5 and 20% are good for that. So you want to make sure that, that for smaller models, it has a little bit more density to make them stronger. And then larger models, though, to save filament, you can print with a lot less. You could go all the way down to 5 uh, fill density if you want, or if you want it to be hollow, you can make it zero, or solid, you can make it 100. Um, so it's a way to save filament and still make strong and durable models. So you can put the fill density anywhere between 5 and 20%. Good. And then the print speed can be uh, either 50 or 30. Those are the two that we recommend. So 50 is the fastest that you can print uh, well. So with any type of 3D printer, 50 is about as high as you can go, 50 millimeters a second to be able to print different things. But if you want to print a really high quality print, you could go all the way down to 30 to slow it down and make it a higher quality and then even change this layer height to 0 0.1. And then the printing temperature is going to be 220. And that's the temperature that it's going to melt the filament at. And the filament is the material that it uses, and it's biodegradable cord plastic called PLA, or polylactic acid. So it'll break down if it's outside for a couple of years. It's made to break down with temperature and moisture fluctuations. A bed temperature which isn't on your screen. I'm going to show you that in a second. Yeah, so we'll, uh, you can right now just set that to 50. And then support type, you can set to everywhere. And then that'll make sure that you have support anywhere that it needs it, it'll automatically generate it. So some models are going to need support, and some of them won't. So you can start off with everywhere just to see uh, if it ever does need it, it'll automatically generate that. And we'll go over a little bit more about that in here in a second. And then the platform adhesion type, that's if you want to help something to stick really well. So we usually print with none uh, or with brim. And brim are kind of like suction cup lines around the outside edge that can kind of help stuff to buckle, uh, because, uh, to not buckle. Because sometimes if you're printing something really big and the build plate isn't quite level, it might kind of warp up on the edges, and brim can help prevent that. And then the filament diameter is 1.75, which is on the filament right here. And then the nozzle size is 0.4. Yep. Okay, awesome. So then now we're going to click on machine and then machine settings. Great. So we're going to change this maximum width to 300, the maximum depth to 300, and then the maximum height to 400. And then here's the big difference between both these printers, both the A5 that we built and the A31 that you built. And the difference is the heated bed. So if you print, if you have the settings for the A5 and you try to save something and print it on the A31, on the big one, it'll print fine. But if you try to set something on the A31 and try to print it on the A5, it won't because it's going to try to print larger than the build area. And the G-code, which is the, the language that the printer reads, will actually override the sizes of the printer. And it also will try to heat the bed up. And that's what this part is right here, this heated bed. So on the Cura settings on the A5, you have to make sure that this heated bed is unchecked. Because it doesn't, since it doesn't have a heated bed, it will try to heat the bed first. Okay. And it will say bed heating error when you try to print something. Okay. So on this one, we're going to have it checked. And then when we click OK, then you'll see it's going to pop up over here. Right there. And then now we can set this to 50. Okay. You got it? Yep. Yeah. All right, awesome. So those are the settings to set up your slicer. And with 3D printing, the slicer is one of the four big steps of creating a model. So the first step, though, and the biggest step is going to be designing a model. So your students are going to create something, and they can use tons of different programs to do that. We have a bunch of recommendations on our website, and I'll send you some links to that after the training as well. Um, but some places that we really love to start at are Tinkercad.com, 
as kind of an introduction, and that's more of like moving 3D shapes around, and you can manipulate shapes and create holes and group them together. And it's free, and it works in Chromebooks. Another great one is onshape.com, and that one's also free. And you can also move uh, shapes around, but it extrudes sketches. So you actually draw things in 2D and then pull them out, which is the, the way that traditional CAD programs or computer-aided design programs work. And that's kind of like the next step up. So uh, it works really well for junior high and high school students, um, and some middle school students too, if they, once they got the hang of, uh, of 3D printing. So that's kind of the one that you can kind of graduate into. And then above that, we have Autodesk. Uh, so Fusion 360, is perfect for junior high and high school, but it's a little more complicated. It's probably a lot more complicated on a lot of different things, but that's the same type of software that industry leaders are using and engineers and scientists um, and business leaders to create three-dimensional models and even three-dimensional uh, end-use products such as 3D printed engine parts um, are created um, through that same process. So once you have uh, the software and then you have the printer and a material to print with, then it's pretty much the same. You're just printing it either out of plastic or out of metal or out of all different types. And uh, these printers are all plastic based, but then once the, the students know those softwares, they can take those skills and work at a college or a university or straight out of high school into an engineering firm that, that needs those different um, CAD design skills or even a uh, like a shop working it. There's lots of uh, automotive shops that, that need CAD design as well. So. Uh, those, that's a great place to start with those different types of programs. And, and those links are all uh, on our webpage, and I'll send them to you in a little bit. And there's tutorials to them as well. And we're actually working on lesson plan tutorials that can help you walk step by step all the way through it on, uh, that you can walk your students through. So that's the biggest step. And that's the step that we want to help you out with a lot too is coming up with curriculum ideas. So we help a lot with curriculum integration and helping you to come up with ideas on how to use your 3D printers with your standards and with your units. So we want to know, we want to help. Um, we have certified teachers on staff that can help you to walk through step by step. I'm a certified teacher as well, so we want to make sure that every step of the way uh, your 3D printer is being used in the classroom and it's not just printing out uh, baby groots and and uh, yoda heads which are awesome but not really learning a lot from them so uh yeah this which where you're actually creating the models from that's the best so the second step is the slicing step so that's what we just set up and it's not as uh, as involved as that first step because the first step it could take you know a week maybe for students to design something or maybe they can design it you know in 20 minutes once they get the hang of it but that second step is where the model that they have is coded for the printer. And it has to have those settings for it to go in there correctly. So for, uh, for your model, and I'll go ahead and just share this my screen with you again so you guys can see it. So you have Cura, and Cura is ready. And once you have your three-dimensional model, you want to download it as either a .stl or .obj file. And there are also websites that you can find that have a bunch. We have some links on our lesson plan page too to some other awesome websites where you can find repositories of 3D printed models as well. And you'll get those, that .stl or .obj file, and then you'll import that into Cura. And that's the second step. That's the slicing step. So it's as easy as clicking load, and then you'll navigate to your SD card. And then uh, on your SD card, you'll be able to find uh, all of the models that, that uh, that we can, we're going to use today. So it's inside the STL files, and you'll find, for instance, here's the dice. Here's that six-sided die that we looked at, that, that you guys said you printed. So we'll just say open once we find it, and you'll see it's .stl, six-sided dice, and then it's just going to stick it right here in the middle. And this over here is the slice. So that's how long it's going to take to print this. And if you change these settings over here, it's going to change those. So since this is in the highest settings, I could change this to 0 0.3 for the lowest, and you'll see now it's only gonna take 10 minutes because those layers are thicker. So it's not gonna look as good, but it'll print a lot faster. You can also change uh, the speed right here. So this is only 30, so I can change this all the way up to 52. Now it's only eight minutes. So you can see that the difference in that can be a lot, especially when you get larger format models. And you can also take something like the die when you click on it, you'll see these settings down here. So you can actually rotate your model. So you can rotate the orientation to make sure that the flat side is down because if it's printed in a strange way, you can click the right mouse button and kind of move it around too. So let's say it was kind of leaned up here in the air like that. This might not be the best print orientation because it might need to make supports around it. And you can kind of see those supports with this support everywhere right here by clicking view mode and then layers. 
So all this turquoise right here, those are all the different support layers. And then you can even scroll this down and look and see what each individual layer is going to print. So you can see by, uh, by zooming in on the model, the red is the outside of the model and then the yellow is the inside of the model. And this is, for instance, this fill density is only 5%, but if I change this to like 50%, you'll see now the cross pattern is filled in inside. So you can kind of get a look about how your model is going to look or how it's going to print as well. So I can click view mode and then go back to normal. And you can even click on your model if you want to, though, and lay it back flat. So now if this is laid flat and then I click view mode and go back to layers, it doesn't need any supports. So that can be something that you can watch out for, that your students are have to watch out for, too, when they put models in to, to be sliced, is to, to check out on where all of the supports are going to be and if they want supports and where they'd like those to end up. You can also right click on the models and you can multiply an object. So I could put maybe four more copies out there. Or I could even add different models. So if I wanted to load as many models as were fit, then you could load like a keychain model too, or as many models as I wanted to put on there. So with the A31, you could have an entire class's models printed on here. And you can click on them and drag them around. And as long as they're yellow, then they'll print. But if they go gray, then that means they can't print and they're outside of your build area. And that's why we wanted to make sure that our build area was correct on our, on our printer to make sure that when they're trying to print to the edges, that, they're, that everything is yellow. Go back, how did you, uh, how did you duplicate those, that dice? So you click right here and right click, and then you can click multiply object. You can also delete all the objects and reset them. You can center them on the platform, but you just click multiply right here, and then you just type in the number of copies that you want. So like maybe three more, and then click okay. And then you can also click on the model and change the scale of it. So if you had a really big model and you weren't worried about the size, you could shrink it down. So if a student made something really large that wasn't to an exact size, then that's really helpful to make the print time a lot less. But using something like the digital caliper, you could design an exact thing, like a hinge that's going to fit on a door or maybe a bracket that's going to fit underneath a shelf. And you can measure it to be that exact size and it will print to that exact size down to a tenth of a millimeter. But if you're not worried about that, you can scale it. So you can scale by either dragging these boxes right here and shrinking things down, or you can click right here and change these values. So I can change this to 0 0.5, which would be 50% of the size. You can also drag it and make it a lot bigger if you want. So maybe you wanted to blow an object up that was designed really small. This is where you do that as well. And you can see your time is going to continue to change over here. So now this is going to take two hours and 35 minutes to print. And it tells you the exact length and uh, weight of the filament that you're going to print as well. You can also say to max for maximum size. So let's say I'm going to delete, I'm going to go ahead and delete all these, uh, these other objects that are on here. And uh, oh, there we go. So let me say, uh, we'll delete all objects. And then I'm going to go ahead and load another die. So I'm going to click on the six sided die. And then on the A31, it has a huge print size. It's 12 inches by 12 inches by 16. So if you click scale and then say to max, you can max out the whole print size. So this is going to take a little bit more than 12 minutes, and that's what it's loading on right now. Yeah. And it, the bigger the models are and the more intricate they are, the longer it's going to take for them to load there on the side. So you can print really large format objects and leave them printing for days if you want. You can print for, we, we printed things for over 100 hours. And it'll just sit and print and you won't have to worry about adjusting it or changing it or anything. As long as it has filament in it and it stays plugged in, it'll finish. And if it messes up, then that's why we're here to help too. And normally if it makes it past those first early stages, those first like two or three minutes, then it's in a really good point. It's 99.9% it's .9 probably going to finish. You want to place any bets on how long this is going to take? <laughs> uh, that's going to take uh, four, days. four days. Four days. All right. Let's see. It's thinking. It's getting to the complicated part now. So you can see it's going to be this maximum size is all the way to 290. And you can even unlock this scale too if you wanted to stretch out and make like the top part taller. Or if you, know, if you wanted to grow something up, or if you wanted to stretch it out wider, then that would be a useful tool as well for you to click on. But as long as this is locked, it'll always scale it together. 
It's almost done. It's taking a bit because it's huge. <laughs> So once you have your model and then you slice your model, so you create your model, you code your model or slice it for the 3D printer, then that third step is where you're going to actually transfer the model to the printer. And that's where we want to you always use the SD card because that's the easiest way to do it. So you don't have to have the computer tethered to the 3D printer. The 3D printers can be anywhere. They can be in the library or they can both be in the science room or they can be in different parts of the building. And students can design somewhere and then slice somewhere else and then even print somewhere else. And by moving around with the SD cards, it allows the printers to just print autonomously wherever. So that's why we always recommend using the SD cards. and, and you can tether it to the computer if you want to be able to see the temperatures and stuff like that like while it's printing but we don't really recommend that because if the computer goes to sleep then it's going to completely shut off the uh the printer and the printer the print's going to fail and you have to restart so here you go 574 hours <laughs> a little bit more than four days yeah a little bit <laughs> yeah so yeah let's see let's um Let's see here. Is it hollow yeah. on the inside? Four days? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so it's going to take a little bit of time, you know? <laughs> so you could, though, print this large. It's absolutely poss possible. Um, but you can see, you see here it's going to take uh, 4,500 meters and uh, 13,000 uh, grams. So it's going to be a little bit. And that's going to be uh, 1,000 grams is one roll of filament. <laughs> you can print this, but it's going to take 13 rolls. To <laughs> so it's going to be a bit, you know. Um, and part of the reason why that's taking so long is because of the fill density that's inside. So if we change this fill density down, if I made this maybe even just 5%, right. it can drastically change the amount of size because then you're cutting way down on the amount of filament that you're using. So it's even sliced a little bit faster now. We'll see. We'll look at that here in a second. Um, as it's getting all ready. But if you guys want to go ahead and get an SD card and then put something into Cura, we're going to slice it and save it to the SD card as that third step. Do you guys have the SD card in there? We got her. Okay, awesome. Yeah, yeah so you just take the SD card. And then go ahead and fit it in there. And then this is almost done slicing here. Here in just a second. And then you'll take that file and save it to the SD card and then eject the SD card and put that in the printer. And then that's that third transfer step. And then the fourth step and the final step is just to print from the printer using the onboard screen, which is another reason why you don't have to have it tethered to a computer because it has a control screen on the printer. So some printers don't have that, which is why it's useful to have it connected to a computer. But this one basically has a computer screen on it. So you don't have to worry about that. You can click right here. So you'll either see SD or you'll see Save Toolpath. You'll see one of those. And then as soon as mine's done, then it'll let me click on that. And one thing too to keep in mind is to never take out the SD card until this is completely done. Because if that happens, it's only going to have part of the G code on it. And it's going to print to a certain point and then it's just going to stop. So you always want to make sure that you let the whole model load onto the SD card before you take it out. Because I've done that before. So <laughs> we're going to go into we're going to grab something to, to create, aren't we? Yeah, and you can find stuff on the SD card too. If you want to look on uh, inside of the the folder that says STL files, right here you can grab you can grab something in there. Yeah, that's perfect. So now it's only going to take 108 hours. So we, we went from 574 to 100. That's what I was thinking. It was, it was, uh, it was hollow on the inside. <laughs> yeah, a little bit, a little bit of difference. Um, and then this one's only going to take a little over two uh, rolls of filament. So what we'll do then is we'll hit this toolpath to SD to save it to the SD card. Or you can right click there and hit save G code as well. And you can also click file and then save G code if you'd like to do that. So any way that you can save it to the SD card, if you click and you see this SD, it'll save it to it automatically. 
But if you don't, then when you click on the little disk, then you'll have to click on where the SD card is to make sure that it saves it on there. And then you'll see on the bottom when it says save down here. So this is saved as volumes, and then on man w 3 d and then the dice. You got it? This is good. Awesome. And then we'll click right here where it says eject. And if you don't say the eject, then you can click and safely remove the hardware to take it out. A little bitty card? Yep. And then we'll take that little tiny card and put that in the side of our A31 right here. And you kind of see like the little SD card slot that's in the side. It's, it'll say SD. And it'll only go in one way. And then it'll click in and then click out. And I'm going to try to switch to my other, my smaller camera's kind of been giving me trouble. So if my screen goes black, I'm still here, but I'm going to try to switch to it and get it to, uh, get it to work so you can kind of see me on my, uh, on my other camera. Just to let you know what's going on. He's gone. He'll be back. He's there. He can hear us. Yeah. Yeah. Because that'll be great. So we can take this back and look at it. Mm -hmm. There you are. Oh, no, there you are. Is it your GoPro or wire? Kira, it's now refreshing. Hmm. So one of my coworkers, he's going to grab another little camera so we can kind of show you around the uh, the A31. And while he's going to grab that, let's go and go ahead and check it out and make sure that everything looks good. So um, one of the things that we want to do is kind of check all the built things. So first we want to make sure that this doesn't rock at all. It's all connected real securely. Is that connected securely? Yeah, we checked it yesterday. Awesome. And then the next thing, you want to grab onto this right here and then try to rock back and forth. And it shouldn't rock this back and forth at all. Okay. Does it rock back and forth? No. Okay, awesome. Did you want to test your cable first? Um, yeah. Yeah, put that one in. Oh, there we go. Yay, there we go. All right, got a camera. Thank you, Mark. All right. So, once we check that, we want to make sure that this right here where it says 220 to 110 is flipped to where it says 110. Right. Yep. You got it? Okay, awesome. Uh -huh. And then now the last thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and turn this a little bit so this lifts up just a little bit off the plate, maybe an inch or so. Other way. There you go. Okay. And then we're gonna... See this board right here, we're gonna grab onto the edge of it and try to rock it back and forth. If it does this, then we gotta tighten something. Like from the from the side, right, right here on the side and then try to rock it this way. Not really. I think it's pretty solid. Yeah, okay, that's fantastic. So then the last thing that we'll do is we're gonna check and make sure everything is plugged in. So the Z, it's plugged into these two connectors. So this connector right here and then this connector right here. And the Z is the up and down motor. Z, show me again. Right here. So this, this little switch right here, and then this motor right here. Yeah. Yeah? Okay, great. And then we'll check the X. And the X is this little switch right here, and then this motor right here. X 
notes there. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. yeah. And then the E right here, we'll check this and make sure that's all the way in. Yep. Great. And then the Y, those are the motors that are back here in the back. So this connector, this switch, and then this motor and make sure that those are plugged in all the way. I got them. Yep. Great. So that's the, the first thing to check if at the beginning of a print it starts to go weird and it makes like a like it sounds like a dying transformer or something. When it's trying to move around and it's not moving or maybe like it should be going up and it's not going up or it should be going left and it's not going left, that's when you check to make sure all the wires are plugged in right. So that's making sure that the machine integrity is all set for your printer. And that is one of the big troubleshooting things. And you're all set now. It looks like you built it great, so you're good to go. And then the second thing that can, uh, that can also happen with 3D printing is to make sure that all of the Cura settings are right. So we went through all those and set all those up. But if you have students that are using Cura on different computers, their different logins, they're going to have to set up Cura the first time they log in on that account because it's profile specific. So even though the program will be installed on that computer, when they log in, they'll have to set the individual like heat and the size of the build plate and all those different types of things. So going through and setting all those up, that can be kind of tricky at the beginning too. So we recommend kind of keeping maybe a couple computers at the beginning, maybe just one computer. And since it sounds like you guys already have like one computer for each printer, and just have those be the Cura computers. And then if something gets weird, then you know that's the one computer you can go and you can check the settings on. And that's, that's the first thing to check. If, if, if a model's getting kind of strange, then you know maybe it doesn't have supports and it's supposed to be supports, so it fell over. Or maybe it's trying to print too fast or it's trying to print too hot or something else is weird in those Cura settings. So um, that's the first thing to check if something starts going uh, awry. Uh, and then the third thing is making sure that the build plate is level. And it's actually the most common issue with 3D printing. And the, for leveling these two different printers, and if you guys want to go and grab this other little one, you can, and we can go over it on that one. But it's very similar to this. Um, and what you're going to do is you're going to adjust on the bottom. There are some little wing nuts that you're going to adjust to make sure that you can feel the tension on uh, each one of the points of the board because it has to drag on a piece of paper, which is about two tenths of a millimeter is a folded piece of paper. And it has to be about that distance from the board itself. So imagine that you're, you're going to put toothpaste on your toothbrush, and if you hold your toothpaste in the air and squeeze, it's just going to go like all over the bathroom sink. It's going to go all over the place. But if you jam it into the toothbrush bristles, then not very much is going to come out either because it's way too close. Um, so you want to have it in that area that's close to the top of the toothbrush. You get a consistent bead that's going to stick out and stick layer by layer by layer by layer, and that's what you want it to do. So it's the most common thing that's going to happen with the printers is they can kind of come out of whack a little bit, usually after every couple of weeks, maybe longer than that, and, and trying to tune them in at the beginning can be kind of tricky too. So the first couple of days you're printing, trying to get them tuned just right can also take a little bit of time because it takes some practice to do. So uh, you can go ahead and turn them on to start it. So on this one, it has a switch on the back, and then the printers, these guys, you just plug them in. So we turn them on. And then what you're going to do is on the control screen, on your screen, when you, when you tap this screen, yours is going to say prepare. Does it say prepare? No. Status screen. Setup control. Setup. Okay. So we'll click setup. And then when we click setup, you're going to click right where it says auto home. And then auto home is going to home the robot to X, Y, and Z zero. And that's what we're going to set right now. We're going to set the height of the Z for zero. Okay. Got it. So now what we're going to do is we are going to adjust the build plate. And to do that, we'll just need any folded piece of paper. So we'll go ahead and get a piece of paper and fold it in half. And then we're going to click on the button and then click setup and then disable motors. And that allows us to move the motors around. So on the smaller, on the A5s, you're going to have three points. You'll have three You'll have a point here and here and here, but on the A31, it's going to be in each corner. Okay. So on this one, we'll take that folded piece of paper and we'll, we can move our build plate out and then kind of move this to the center above the wing nut. So we'll have this set up to where 
the paper fits underneath it. And if it doesn't fit, you can actually push it down and fit it underneath there. Because you want it to drag, but you don't want it to not move at all. Like, see how mine's too close? It's not moving. Or it doesn't feel anything. Imagine if you are setting your finger down and then you're dragging the paper on your finger and you feel the tension dragging on the paper. That's what you want that nozzle to feel like. And you can adjust these little bolts here on the bottom. So this one right here. And the way that those are adjusted is by, uh, by cranking them to the left or to the right. So when you actually tighten the bolt on the bottom, it's going to loosen it on top. And then the paper with the bill plate. And then when you loosen the bolt on the bottom, it's actually going to make it tighter on top. So it's counterintuitive to what you would think. So in this case, this is too close. So because this is too close, I need to tighten this bottom wing nut on the bottom. So if I'm looking right at it, I'm gonna turn this counterclockwise, about a fourth of a turn, and see if I can move it. And that's a little bit better, but I'm gonna turn it about another fourth of a turn. There we go, until we feel it dragging. And it can leave marks on the paper, that's fine. Okay. And then we'll move it to, once we feel the paper dragging there, we'll move it to this other corner. And we'll try it on this corner too. And that'll be the same way. So this one, it still feels a little bit close. So I'll turn about a fourth of a turn counterclockwise and test it, maybe about another fourth of a turn. There we go. And then now it's dragging really well. So we'll do that on each four corners. Okay. And then we're going to heat it up and then do it again. So we test this one. That one's pretty good. And then this one right here, that's still a little bit close. So maybe about another fourth of a turn. And then we've got them all pretty good. Then... We're gonna tap on our screen and go back to setup and then tap preheat PLA. And then that heats up the nozzle and on the A31 it'll actually heat the bill plate up too. And you wanna do that when you level to make sure that any plastic bits that might be stuck to the bottom of the nozzle are off of there. To make sure that when you're leveling it, you're leveling it with the bed and not with, not with the nozzle and then a piece of plastic and then the bed. So it takes a little bit to heat up. And then the nozzle in the bed will, uh, will be to the uh, optimum heating temperature. And then while that's heating, you can go ahead and get some filament and get that ready too if you want. And you can unwrap it. And then always just make sure when you're using the filament that you pull it back through these little holes right here in the side so it doesn't come unwound. Because just like fishing line or weed eater line, if it gets wound, uh, unwound, it can actually tangle in, in itself and that can cause a clog. And then we'll set that right here on the side too. And in the case of the smaller A5, then we'll set that on a, uh, on a spool holder. And both of them feed in the same way. So should we be through this hole? No, that's when we're... You put it through the hole when you're done, right? When you're not using when it? When you're not using it. Uh, so this one right here. Yes. Right. Yeah, you feed it through here. When we're, when we're ready to go. So once this one's heated up and we test it again to make sure it's all level, then yeah, exactly. You think you got it level? Yes, we're pretty good. Okay. On all four of the corners? We piddled, yeah, we piddled with it yesterday and it's pretty close. Okay, great. So then we're gonna load this in the same way. So we'll go ahead and preheat PLA. So we'll tap on setup and then preheat PLA on the control screen. Okay. Because the nozzle has to be heated before we put the filament in or take the filament out. And that is the fourth big uh, troubleshooting term, is making sure that the filament is flowing through the machine properly. So one thing that we can always do is to make sure that when we load the filament, we're always pushing out any old filament, and that can force out a clog. And then when we unload it, we'll always unload it by tapping where it says preheat, uh, or where it says uh, preheat soft pull, and right. then pull it out. Um, if you guys saw that on the screen, and that and that heats it up to 100 degrees. And the reason that that's really useful is because by heating up to 100, it's at like a semi-solid state. And you always want to heat it up from 100 from its cool off state. And then when you pull it out, it can pull out the gunk and stuff that might be stuck in there. Because one of the things that will cause a clog, and, what, and I would say one of the biggest tips with 3D printing, is to always just have the printer off if it's not printing. Because if it stays on and it's heated and there's filament inside of it, the filament will actually bake into the end of the nozzle and that can cause a clog and that can cause some issues. So it's usually just a good rule of thumb. If, if it's not printing, just have your students just unplug them and leave them unplugged. Uh, and what we're gonna do then is now, when the, as this is heating up, 
When it gets heated up to 220, we're going to load the filament through. And that's also why we, we're going to lift up the axis a little bit to be able to push the filament through. Because the filament's not going to be able to feed through if we don't lift it up. And this would also be a time, once we lift it up, to actually use that filament unclogging tool. So you see the flossing, uh, the flossing wire. And that wire you can use, when there's no filament in it, you can use this wire to clean out the nozzle. And then that sometimes can get a clog out or something like that. Because a clog might happen. It's probably going to happen eventually, and we're here to help if you're having trouble with it. Um, we want to be every step of the way to make sure that it's never just sitting in the corner and broken and not working. And we want you to contact us, absolutely. But the, for your students, they can dive in and adjust and do some of these troubleshooting techniques as well. And we also love to be troubleshooting with your students. So if you have a clog and you're having trouble with it, have your students contact us, and then we'll walk them through how to fix it. So once we have this heated up to 220, then we're going to go ahead and tap the button. And then we're going to spin the controls. And then move axis, which is at the bottom. Kind of got to scroll down a little bit. And then we're going to go to move one millimeter. And then we're going to move the Z axis. And then we'll go ahead and just spin that to about 20 or 30. And then that will raise this z-axis up. You can kind of see how mine's lifting up right here. Yeah, there we go. Awesome. So now what we're going to do is we're going to load the filament in right here. And you want to make sure that the filament always feeds off the top of the roll. And it doesn't come unwound, but it'll go in this hole right here, and then through this tube, and then all the way through there. And one thing that you can do to help feed it in there better is to always clip the end. So if there's any melted stuff on the, on the end of that, that can cause some issues when you're trying to print, because it can actually get stuck as you're trying to feed it in there. So it always helps to clip it, and then it also helps to have this kind of at a point to feed in there better. So if you kind of clip this at an angle, then when you feed it in, it'll be easier to feed. And it feeds through right here, and then you'll squeeze this lever, move my hands around so you can see a little bit better. You squeeze this lever and you'll feed it through there and then through this tube and then all the way through this white tube all the way through until it won't go anymore. And if it's heated up, when you're pushing it all the way through, you can either go to the move axis and feed some filament out or when it goes all the way to the end, you can just push it a little bit more. So like this one's all the way at the end now. So if I push it a little bit more, then we can actually look and see down where our filament is. It's actually coming out adjust it up a little bit. So you can see the filament is coming out of the end right here. And then this is where we always want to use the pliers to reach in and grab it. Because the only part of this that gets hot is that bottom part of the nozzle. So this part doesn't get hot, but underneath here, it does. Uh oh. Dang it. <laughs> so do you all have any questions about loading the filament? Yeah? Okay, awesome. So once you got the filament loaded and we know that it's level, then we're ready to start. So to start the print, we'll tap the button and then just like on the other one, we can go to refresh SD card if we took the SD card out and it's on and that'll kind of reset everything. But otherwise, we'll go to print from SD and then when we tap print from SD, then you'll see your model. And then when you tap your model, then it'll get ready to print it. It'll, it'll zero itself out and then it'll start printing. So it'll heat itself up to the heating temperature. It's going to do the bed first and then the nozzle. And then it's going to zero itself out to make sure it knows always where zero is. And then it's going to go out and then start printing your model. You can click refresh SD on the bottom and then that'll kind of, that'll like reload the, the printer so it knows that it's in there. So do the controls on the A5 that you guys have, the small one, do they look the same on the screen or really similar? Do the controls look really similar on the small A5 to this one? Okay, great. Yeah, then I guess you just got an older version of the, the user manual then. So yeah, I'll send you, I'll send you the new one. Can you say that, can you say that one more time? You're, you're breaking up. I, I, something's happening, I think, with the sound or something. I can't hear you. 
Oh yeah, on uh, on there when it, does it say print from SD when you refresh the SD card? No. Okay. Do you have the SD card plugged all the way in on the side? It might not be clicked all the way in. Okay. There it is. Okay, awesome. Awesome. So then it's going to heat up and then it's going to start printing. So while that's heating up, do you guys have any more questions for me? AutoCAD. AutoCAD and you know our Autodesk. Yeah, that'll be good. And you and you can use all those three D CAD design programs to three uh, D design with. Just got to save it as an mm -hmm. A .stl file. And there, you might have to put an extension. Sometimes you have to do it in a certain way uh, to get it to come out of Inventor or something like that. But if you need any help with that at all, that's what we're here for. So we want to help you. Anything that has to do with the printer or getting stuff to the printer or trying to integrate it into your classroom, anything that has to do with 3D printing, we have your back. And we want to be there for you every step of the way. So is it printing? Looks like it's moving. Is it sticking? Do you see it sticking like layer by layer by layer? And on the right side, so it might have been a little bit. Oh yeah, it could be, yeah. And it prints that skirt around the outside edge. That's the first thing that it prints. And that will show you to make sure that everything's level and to make sure that all the filament has built up pressure inside of there. So if the skirt is only off on the on one side, that's okay, because that means it was just building up pressure. But that helps to make sure that when it starts printing the model, it's all set and ready to go. So does the model look like it's printing? Yeah, okay, fantastic. So what's the first thing you guys are gonna do with uh, 3D printers with your students? We're the Wakefield Bombers. We, I don't know, we might make some little I don't know. Keychains, yeah. Keychains are an awesome place to start. Yeah, because then the students are learning how the, the CAD design program works and the whole process of 3D printing, and they can kind of work through the troubleshooting and loading filament and all those different types of things. So, yeah, absolutely. Well, if you guys need any help or need help coming up with ideas or anything, just let us know, because that's what we're here for. Okay, okay. I've always seen those uh, bearings. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah, those are awesome. Yeah, they print in place, and you can pop the supports and move them. Yeah, those are fantastic too. That's a good learning tool. All right, guys. Well, that's all I got. You guys have any more questions? Um, are we supposed to call a number? If you want, that's however you want to do it. So we have uh, on our website we have our support section. I can go ahead and even show you that right now. Um, so on uh, on our website, if you go to uh, nwa3d.com, we have our number here. Oops, let me move this over here. So our number is down here on the bottom, right here if you want to call us. And then we also have in support, uh, inside of our support section, we have our request support. And that's when, uh, when, when you call or when uh, you send us an email, we're going to have you go to there to so we can verify the serial numbers and all that kind of stuff so we can keep up with it to make sure that if you have an issue that keeps happening, then it's something that we need to replace or something that uh, we need to walk you through. And then we also have our user manuals are right here. And then we have troubleshooting resources to go check out too and then all of our information about our warranties. I have one more question. Sure. No, so it'll cool in about five seconds. That's a good question. So as soon as it gets done, it's ready to take it off. And with the printer, it's gonna move to the side and then cool itself off when it's done printing. So it's gonna kind of move over and then stop, and then it's gonna it kind of move itself out of the way. And then that's why it's nice to print stuff like overnight or something like that, because then it can print and be done at three in the morning, and then it'll just move to the side. And the printer will stay on 
but it won't be heated, so that's okay. And then as soon as the model's done, though, you can pop it off, and that's what the spatula is for. So you can kind of go underneath there and then pop it up, and you'll be able to take models off. And on the smaller one, um, the big one has power. Yes. No, it doesn't. So you just unplug it. Yeah, it's and that's part of the, the simplicity of it that helps to helps it to be really easy to work on, easy for your students to manage, and it's less things to go wrong. So you can plug it into a power strip and just turn a power strip on and off if you want, or you can just unplug it from the side. Okay. All right. Cool. All right. Well, you guys have a fun uh, rest of your summer and have fun 3D printing. Yeah. We have one we have one week left. Oh, one week? <laughs> yeah, I remember what that's like. <laughs> yeah, enjoy it. <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right, we'll see you all later. Have a good one. Have fun.